Assalamualaikum, dear Sheikh Nurjan. Walaikum salam wa rahmatullah. Um, see, what was the word you said for a captive servant when when the shaitan doesn't want to let go of the soul easily? Asiya. The categories of the servants that eat from the table, who's uh, yateem, miskeen, wasiya, who's been held captive, enslaved. enslaved. InshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaikum As Salaam wa rahmatullahi Sayyidi, why is it that while in meditation sometimes I feel bending down like a deflating balloon? Yeah, like an energy sort of leaving. So sometimes we feel that the energy is just going and alhamdulillah, like the separation from the soul to the physicality. <coughs> So many times you may feel like your your body like an empty shell and it's barely able to hold itself there while you leave, inshaAllah. And you feel yourself more apart from the physicality and that's what we're striving for is to consciously meditate and ask to separate from that physicality. And that's through the good deeds and actions and, and the, the meditation, the contemplation and the contemplation with the shaykh, that once you contemplate with the shaykh and you connect with that reality, your consciousness begins to change. That what would the shaykh think at this time, what would the shaykh's feeling be? And then that supersedes my, my desire and my will. And that has to do with the station of faith when Prophet was describing to Sayyidina Umar you have to love me more than you love yourself. So by listening to the self then that state is not going to open. That state opens when you have a high level of consciousness that you're continuously thinking of the connection, the shaykh and say, to dress me through your dress and look through my eyes and grant me through my heart and you build a continuous dialogue and connection with the shaykh so that you feel his presence and that what does he want from you, what is it that you want that Thy will be done, that not my will. So the will of the shaykh to come and if you can feel, how are you going to receive the will of Allah Everybody always want to jump all the way to the top. So you see like somebody on the floor and there's steps and they say, no, no, I jump from here, I'll go up to that level. It's impossible because they're so entrenched in listening to themselves. So this is Atiullah. Allah is asking, listen to Allah, Atiya Rasul, he knows that we're not going to achieve. So he says, then listen to Prophet ulul amri minkum and knows that you're not going to be able to listen at that stage day one. So then obey, obey, listen to the ulul amr of the people of tafakkur, that's what they're striving for. So that they're in a continuous meditation and continuous consultation that, that to be guided into their heart and what is it that I'm supposed to be doing? What is it your will in this situation? What am I supposed to be inspired to do? And then they have a high level of consciousness towards the shaykh and as a result they become very guided. And then all the other pieces begin to come together. As a result they have a high level of taqwa. If you can feel the consciousness of the shaykh in the faculty of your hearing, I can begin to hear the inspiration of my shaykh in my hearing. And that's why when I listen to him it's so important. That's why the relationship with the shaykh has to be something very deep. You, you can't connect with the shaykh that you're not familiar with. You don't know how he speaks, you don't know, you have no sort of juzba and magnetism to that individual. So by listening to, continuously listening to the teachings, what's happening? You hear his voice and the styles and mannerisms in which he talks. Whatever broken English and incorrect pronunciations, that's that shaykh. And as a result when you're connecting, you're hearing that. You hear that conscious voice guiding you and giving the, the guidance of left and right and understanding. 
And then they begin to meditate more and deeper and they begin to witness the shaykh. That level of consciousness, it, de it develops taqwa. Because if you're conscious, oh how, how am I going to do like these crazy things when my shaykh that I'm connecting with all the time, he's hearing, I'm hearing him through my ears, I'm seeing him through my heart, how am I going to do these, these awful things? And if they don't establish that, how are they going to be seeing Prophet When that becomes… then you know you're hallucinating. When you don't have the ability to connect with the shaykh and, and feel and hear the conscious advice of the shaykh into your heart and to visually visualize the shaykh within your firasan and your vision and that you're listening continuously to the voice continuously, all the videos every day you're listening is being burnt into the heart. If you can't develop that state, how could you possibly try to go above and say that, no I'm, I'm connecting now to Prophet And it doesn't happen that way and those people are hallucinating. And what the, the whole effort is that you're building a taqwa and consciousness. In taqullah wa kunu ma asadaqeen, it's all from Qur'an, all hadith, nobody making up anything here. Allah is describing, have a taqwa and keep the presence of sadiq, of truthful servants through their actions and their deeds, they're truthful. Keep their presence, Allah doesn't care for dunya. So it means that keep the presence of their soul, keep the presence of that association that you're always with them. As a result that's the taqwa. You feel that they're always there, how could you be watching, how could you be talking inappropriately, how could you be doing all these inappropriate things? As a result of that high level of consciousness, they become very conscious with the shaykh. What the shaykh wounds from their heart, they feel it. And they begin to do the things that are necessary and their heart is like alive and in tuned with the shaykh. And as a result of that level of purity, it becomes in tune now higher and higher with all the shaykhs and then becomes in tuned with the presence of Prophet and they have an immense fear that their audience with Prophet is very short. They don't want to do anything that would come against that adab, they don't want to say anything inappropriate, they don't want anything of an of a inappropriate nature so they have a tremendous fear and that's their taqwa. As a result that audience with Prophet with their soul is they feel the consciousness, they feel that presence and they ask, for what they have to ask, they ask for the tajalli and the nazar and they fish shy and they withdraw because of that consciousness and that their comfort zone is with the presence of the shaykh and the madad and in the, in the light of that reality. But that develops a very strong consciousness that you understand what the shaykh is sending within your heart what you're supposed to be doing and you go out and you do it and you're establishing what has to be established. So that, that, that is what's needed to have that level of consciousness so that they can rise above their nafs and only following the nafs desires. As a result they become conscious of then what awliya give and inspire within their heart and then all those then in the ranks of that reality are continuously inspiring within the heart inshaAllah. But that requires then that relationship and the establishment of that relationship with the shaykh, the connection, the madad, the, the muraqabah, everything, inshaAllah. And that's why you can't bounce around because it's such a deep connection. You can't watch somebody else's videos and, and then think, okay you have a connection with them too and you have a connection with who and this and that and this and that. And before you know it then you realize some time may go by and you realize you don't have a connection with anyone. Because you didn't put that level of time and commitment into that reality. But if you make that commitment, make that connection, that whole world can open up and that world of light. When the one is committed to the connection of the shaykh, the audience with other holy souls, they are for a very short time to receive the tajalis, but they go back to their level of comfort. And that's in the presence of the shaykh to receive their asharat and they never overpass their limit. And that's what Mawlana Shaykh would always teach is that every, every person should know the line in which he steps and never step beyond that. And if they begin to step beyond that they entered into the oceans of now against bad mannerisms and everything else becomes delusional or illusional for them, inshaAllah. 
السلام علیکم سعیدی وعلیکم السلام ورحمۃ اللہ سعیدی کین پیپل اسپریچولی اسپائی آن اس اللہ سیز یو پروفیٹ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم سیز یو دیر ون اینجل آن دی رائٹ اینڈ ون اینجل آن دی لیفٹ دے سیز یو سو دیرز دیرز مینی آئیز آن یو اینڈ دی شیخس can see if, if necessary and they're given uh, a shout out we said before, if something comes into their system like an email to look, to make dua, whatever it is, then yes, people are, are very easy, easy to be seen. The shaykhs are encrypted and that we described in other things, that the shaykhs condition is encryption, is an encrypted reality. That's for their defense and Allah done to protect them. Everybody else is very open until they have fortified their heart and sanctified their heart and then Allah begin to encrypt their reality. That's when the talks we gave that, don't put your face out on Facebook. Don't put your face out on Instagram. The face that you put is there very easy for people whom have a bad intention to enter through your face, to take your energy, to enter into your energy and that's why many people never wanted their face on any type of media. And they said that their face, that something would be stolen from their soul and then people laugh because <laughs> they didn't understand the depth of that spirituality. And I believe also the Amish to till date will not allow you to take a photo of them. They feel that you can steal something from their soul. So it's not so much you steal from the soul but somebody can send a very negative energy if that's a practitioner of that reality. So yes, everything has to be sort of watched, everything has to be sort of guarded but does anybody listen? No. And in the last days does anybody listen to the shaykh's teaching? No. Does his family listen? Absolutely not. Nobody is a prophet in their own home. So that's the danger of the world now. Nobody's a, a, a prophet in their own town. It means nobody wants to listen. The shaykhs give these teachings, does anybody listen? No. But are the realities real? Very real. Are they the source of great difficulties, sadness, sicknesses and, and burdens? Very much so. Uh, as Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Rahmatullah Is the level of oppression of the soul related to the level of difficulties we face in dunya? Yeah, <clears throat> that, that, that uh, has multiple layers, uh, there's, there's not just one answer to that. The one whom is oppressing their soul and most definitely there may be difficulties on their life if Allah didn't destine for them of that reality. If they're destined to be enlightened and destined to be of a, of a, of a holy nature then yes that could bring tremendous difficulties on their path as a means of those difficulties they become purified and sanctified and they take the path of nafsani instead of ruhani. So there's two ways, the nafsani way and ruhani way means the egoistic way where you're going to continuously receive a beating or the ruhani and the spiritual way in which you realize and you want everything to be spiritually beatific. You practice, you meditate, you, you connect with the, the beatific reality of Prophet or nafs anyway where you're continuously doubting that, that you know you have to control these elements and Allah like, give you a beating all the time and they have continuous difficulty in their lives which is very sad to, to sort of witness that people are not taking Allah seriously and He's calling them. So that can be quite, quite uh, traumatic and, and we've seen throughout our lives that it can be very difficult and, and very… Uh, either way they're going to submit. If Allah wants them to submit, they're going to submit. So best to submit with beautific love and grace inshaAllah. 
Assalamu alaikum ya shaykh. Wa alaikum assalam Sometimes people come to me and throw huge negativity with loud voices and very terrible attitude and suddenly I can't speak. I feel heartbeat fast. Is there anything I can do? Yeah, that's uh, the, the practices, those are all the, the teachings, right? It's like the, the dog of Ashab al kaf that to, to feel one's weakness and vulnerability then this is the, the opening of Surat al kaf on the 18th, on the, the second lunar month was those teachings that we become like a dog in which many people want to cast their stones and this path is a path of humility. That if you acknowledge that you're doing right, you have your taweez, you have your wudu and you're trying to make your connection and people by virtue of their badness they decide that they want to continuously attack, continuously attack then hasbunallahu wa ni'mal wakeel that you keep your taweez, keep your wudu and anytime you're in the presence of these types of individuals keeping silent. Making your du'as, hasbunallahu wa ni'mal wakeela, hawla wa la quwwata illa billahi alim nadeem and that fa'udha amri in Allah, in Allahu basirun bi libad. Ya Rabbi you see my condition and saying all these things in your heart. That you see my condition and Allah is the greatest of those to defend. So the patient, Munas Sabirin is a, is a beatific condition from Allah Zawajal, Sabr al-Jameel, the beatific and patient servant. It's through the grace of being patient that the person is pushing out all this negativity and Allah dress the one whom is patient with beautific lights and majestic lights for as long as they can tolerate it. When they can't tolerate it they try to walk away and, and go to another room and another environment. And that is if whatever the person can carry of this type of difficulty but it become more and more in the world. Because the more and more the people becoming negative and satanic, the more and more the people of light aggravate and agitate them. So that's why we say we don't wear certain colors outside, white, white turbans, white kufis, these are not good because they reflect too much light on people. And the people whom have a bad energy, they get burned by these lights and become very aggressive against people. So that's why then the recommended color was the green that Mawlana Shaykh would teach and these days specifically wear green. This green is a protection against shayateen and brings an angelic light as a protection inshaAllah against the, the nazar and bad energy of, of these people whom they have devils within them that they know or don't know that are very aggressive and green is a, is a, is a tremendous color of protection from this difficulty. Whether it's a green hijab, green kufi, inshaAllah. Uh, assalamu alaikum Shaykh. Wa alaikum as salam wa Shaykh, when I, do z- when I do zikr and I close my eyes, I see crocodiles coming towards me. What, what yeah. is that? Yeah, crocodiles and snakes and cockroaches and bats and these are, these are the difficulties. Uh, of uh, bad energies and, and what have to be combated. We give that talk in, in the talks of seclusion. So on YouTube you can search, just put Shaykh Nurjan Khalwa or seclusion and they have the talks on that reality that these characteristics they are in the energy and these energies have to be confronted. Some people see wild dogs, that's a very sort of wild character within them that's very aggressive. So as they're meditating and doing their zikr these, these energies are manifesting and coming against them. At the same time then you're making your connection with the shaykh and ignoring these things that are coming towards you, then making your connection and beautifying the connection with salawats and the different zikrs that you're doing with your connection so that your energy and your connection can combat these, these creatures whether they're snakes, they're roaches, they're wasps, things that represent a harshness. So alligator is just something very harsh, very abrasive. 
and whether they're outside or inside. The, the people around you are like crocodiles or the inner character has a tendency to all of a sudden turn around to be very vicious and ferocious. So either way it's a way of connecting and cleansing the energy, keeping the connection with the shaykhs inshaAllah and making the duru, the sharif and making their salawats during that connection inshaAllah. Uh, as salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam uh, Related to the secret of numbers, when we are constructing a house, uh, is there any importance of using specific numbers for dimensions or things like that? Everything has a, a sacred geometry, so most definitely there's a reality within the, the, the angles, the direction of what's being built, the angles in which they're being built. But if you're building to sell then that's not anything that's of any necessity. So these were people who were building specific masjids or centers, then the, the location of that if they had a control, the direction in which the center would face, the, the, the geometry in which they use had an immense reality. Now to build something to be sold then it's a, it's a wasted understanding, especially when the end user won't be benefiting or using that energy. But for us to understand is different than a project of, okay how am I going to build something? But to understand the, the geometry and the degrees of everything in relation to the heavens is important, right? Why, why the Kaaba has four corners? And what, what's, what's in, in, the, in the 90 degrees? And that why is the 90 then connect towards your abjad and ilmu huruf. So the 90 represented the Siddiqs and then that had an importance of the four Siddiqs. So it means the geometry and, and the numbers in relationship to the huruf but all in relationship to the heavens. Because what's important is not me and you because the first step of this door was I was non-existent. So when I'm trying to understand Holy Qur'an it's between Allah and Prophet and I don't exist. So ilmu huruf and, and the knowledge of numbers is not for my existence and reality but to understand and to decipher the heavenly realities and heavenly understandings inshaAllah. So why the, the 90 is important? So then you would search the 90, 90 degrees, there's four great 90 degrees which are the four great Siddiqs and then a circle can be brought in and divided into four and these are the, the circle of creation and the reality of again the great Siddiqs. So yeah everything is based on the geometry and the reality of that geometry and the reality of the numbers in relationship to the ilmu huruf because the ilmu huruf is, is the, is the uh, every, what do they call, every coding has a deciphering key. When they want to decipher secrets there's a deciphering key that's ilmu huruf and the abjad table in the numeric order of nine how we laid it out, that it's in the power of nine. So from the first letters that go to the nine. And the second one that comes down they're all in rows of nine based on the power of nine. So the geometry and degrees and numbers in relationship to inshaAllah the ilmu huruf and the reality of those letters that are bringing out inshaAllah. As uh, Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam uh, This is uh, from an email, uh, Sayyidi a person of wisdom told me that if a person or a jinn is attacking me 
and I want to express my problem to another person or a sheikh, I should not talk because jinns can listen and if I talk, they can hear information and they can use against me. So this person told me that it is better to write about my problem to the sheikh or to the person which I want to talk to looking for help because jinns can't read. I want to know your point of view. Do, can jinns read? Also, can they listen to our thoughts or if we don't verbally express our thoughts, they can't have access to them? Yeah, I don't, I don't ever want to compare with someone else because I don't know who you talk to and I don't want to say something <laughs> that makes somebody <laughs> angry. <laughs> so it's better that once you make reference to someone else is my, my comment is to be no comment. Hmm. Yeah. So our understanding is something completely different. But anytime you want to ask a question, we shouldn't reference other people because we're not here to, to attack or bother people and then become like a, like a battle of, of peacocks. He said, she said, he said, he said, he said, they said, then that's not, that's not tariqah. But whomever you follow, have faith in them and follow. And if it doesn't work, follow someone else and take their teachings and don't mix it with anything else. You can go to our websites about energy, about taweez, about all of the, the ruqya that the shaykhs have brought and these are Sultan and awliya. These are the teachings from Sultan and awliya to Mawlana Shaykh to Grand Shaykh to Shaykh Muhammad Adam, Radha Sallallahu Siru, all, all of them. This is Nashbandiya teaching. So then you take that teaching and, and you follow but we can't sort of compare notes with other people and then uh, make, make it into battle zone because then inevitably they take this back to that person and say, well, you said this, so your, your, your teaching is wrong and that's, you know. And I don't know if anybody is deliberately wrong or that's the level in which they reach to and their level of understanding. <clears throat> but definitely they read. <laughs> well, you think they can't read with all the power Allah gave to them? Mm. As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi uh, what should we recite if have to go outside after Maghrib for some reason or should we not recite anything as it may attract energy, negative energies? No, you can recite your, your falaq and nas and ikhlas and recite, blow upon yourself. And we have that on our website and the section on meditation on the protection of energy and protecting oneself and we have it in the timeless reality all of these things on, on what to recite because any, anyone taking a path towards energy practices, they have to have this system down solid. How to wear your taweez, how to make your wudu, what are your recitations, it's all on your phone now and you can also copy the different du'as that are not on the phone, put them on your phone notes and you put these are protection recitations and you open up the phone that notes and you begin to recite them. So they're all online and, and all of these are the foundation. So your house is meditation and tafakkur but you have to lay the foundation on, on the strong understanding of energy, energy practices, your wudu, your salat and wudu and the, the connection, the muraqabah, the taweez and the protection that Allah gives to individuals as a sign of humility so that we admit to ourselves that I'm a humble servant and that Allah's nazar and grace to be upon me. So these are many, many sort of realities that we have to develop and then the practices of energy then become more and more stronger and solid in its understanding inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Wa Alaykum Salaam Sayyidi, in relation to uh, wearing uh, green or not white, does the same, does it also apply to colors in the house like the paint, like a room, room color of energy? Yeah, the house is white. Yeah, the house is, you want the reverse, right? You want your house to have a very angelic energy. You want the energy to, to be very reflective, so that's not a problem. 
if you want rooms to be white and the energy to be clean, the space to feel the, the abundance of, of cleanliness. This is about the beatific color of white in an ocean of negativity. Right? So the white is very reflective of faith, there's nothing more beautiful than people wearing all white and going out but you're going out into the land of devils whom the light hurts them and hurts the creatures that are on them and therefore they become aggressive towards people. And so we learned that long ago traveling through airports. You would go to airport and inevitably you wore white you had problem with everybody, everybody in the airport was giving problems. Because just it was agitating their souls, their beings. So then you wear colorful colors and they would be more lenient and they would help you. So yes there was a direct correlation between colors and the effect on people. With our homes then it's… you want those reflective colors, you want the angelic colors, you want to magnify the holiness of that space, so alhamdulillah whatever people prefer inshaAllah. We keep green lights within our center because of the… again the holiness of the green light and at night the center has its own green lights to stay on and again that is a, is a light that uh, represents the love of Prophet and the light of Ahlul Bayt. The light that they reflect is a very beautific green light from their souls. Every time you make durood al sharif again there's a beautific green light emanating with your salawats coming into existence inshaAllah. Uh, as salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam uh, This person uh, wants to know about, uh, again uh, about wearing the taweez, where we can wear it, where we can't wear it. You wear the taweez all the time but it's not waterproof, it's very simple. It's not waterproof so it will get ruined in the water and you wear it all the time everywhere. And the taweez is under a layer of plastic wrapped and then wrapped with the leather. It's made to protect you in the bathroom. That's its, its purpose and its protection is to protect you in bad places. So you wear it everywhere inshaAllah, just it's not waterproof yet inshaAllah one day we develop the <laughs> the seal that can go over it and make it to be waterproof inshaAllah. Mm. As Salaamu Alaikum Shaykh Walaykum As Salaam Sayyidi, what, I feel every time I'm moving forward shaitan is pulling me down, what should I do to protect myself? Yes that's like a soccer game, that's when you, you know that you know you're, this life is real. As soon as we do something shaitan is aggressively trying to stop. That he's not going to let the person to reach the finish, finish line. And then Allah wants continuous asking of madad and support that, Ya Rabbi help me and support me. And that make us to always feel that we're in need and asking for madad and the support of the shaykhs of awliya of Prophet <coughs> nazar. Had we not felt that, look at the reverse. We would think, oh I don't need to listen to what he's talking about, I don't need to go for mawlid, I don't need to, to do the well, I don't need to do the food, I don't need to do all these things, I achieve something. But that's not what Allah wants, He wants this to be the battle until you give your last breath and say, Alhamdulillah and they found you dead. That battle never ends. So every goal Allah will make again another difficulty. And that's how you rise and that's how Allah dresses the soul with all this beatific lights. But if at any point you thought you made it everything would stop. So the shaykhs are continuously busy, continuously thinking of projects, continuously trying to get the nazar and keep the nazar of Prophet And that's why everything for them, do like this, we do like this, let's do like this. Because you're coming with a caravan to the reality of Prophet and, and achieving that nazar. Otherwise they would have sit at home and done nothing. But no they want continuously to be under that nazar, they want continuously for that himma and the zeal to do more and bring more people and more people to be happy to bring more people until this is the end of their da'wah and their life was for that da'wah inshaAllah. Uh, as Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Please excuse me, 
Uh, should, a, should a married couple have a dedicated room for making madad? Or is it okay to do practices in the bedroom? What is the proper adab? Sure. Yeah, no problem. Wherever you are you, you can make your madad. It's preferred if people have a space, even just a, a corner where they have their carpet, they have the candle, they have the beatific fragrances, they have things like the book for their… the Qur'an, they have their Dalal the, the al Make an area specific to your ibadah and your worshipness, your prayers and your meditation. No doubt because that becomes a maqam which means a, a spiritual station. And the shaykhs ask all of the ruhani beings, they, they want to make the shaykhs happy. So when that area becomes a maqam there are many who are travelling in the spiritual realm, they stop and they pray to rakah there. For them that a, becomes a, a maqam, a holy place and as a result they become more and more holy, more and more holy. So no definitely Mawlana Shaykh would always say, make an area for your ibadah and your worshipness and that's one area. But anywhere in any part of your home you can sit and meditate except again obviously that the, the dirty places that not anything supposed to be done there. So any part of the home can be meditation and, and tafakkur and praying. You pray in all the rooms and meditate in all the rooms to bring a holy light, especially to your bedroom, the bedrooms of the children and other family members because you want that light, you want the angelic tajalli within the home and within these rooms as a protection and brings the barakah and blessings inshaAllah into our lives. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzat amma yasifoon wa salaam ala al-mursaleen wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen bi hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha.